All right, so you've got your model in here, you've got shaders applied, you've got the lighting or the match image that you want, you've got everything perfect. Now it's time to generate your final image. For that, we're just gonna jump over here from the design window into our render window. What the render, if render window is, is this just gives us the options of how we wanna render this out. So basically, we can either start up here in the upper left, we can either render with our GPU, or if you uncheck it, it'll be your computer's CPU. Again, that'll depend on your individual computer's setup. Uh, then down here, you know, we can, you can dig through the documentation to understand what all of these mean. But basically, I usually just use high for a, um, something I'm, I'm publishing digitally, you know, like something on the web. And if, if, if any case, you know, you want to print something, I'll go to an ultra samples. And you, you can see that it's just changing these. So basically, um, your samples are just the number, it's technical stuff. So it's like the number of rays that get fired into your scene that help refine it. It takes longer. Basically, each one of these looks better, but takes longer. Um, sometimes that looks better doesn't actually let you, like the medium looks good. So you don't necessarily need to go to high. It's just, it's taking longer to get to the same image. Um, noise level is like a noise reduction tool. Uh, if it goes too high, it might look a little soft, so that's something to watch out for. Max time, you can you can max out. You can say like, I need this to stop out at a certain point, um, and then you can um, export the just noise, the denoise, and the displacement, and then you keep the resolution either full or you can go down to half if you're just trying to test something. Uh, in the middle here, this is where your uh, image will render out. It's it's big now because you got the actual size. If I want to fit that on screen, I can do that here. Um, and then in the upper right, these are all your PEX port settings. So if you had multiple cameras, like if I wanted to render both my viewport camera and the camera I created, I can click both of those. It doesn't do them simultaneously. It does one at a time, but it does, it does render them all. Um, the I can override the camera's uh, resolution size and say like, you know, actually I want to render this at a higher resolution here. You give the file export a name. So this is how the image file is going to be written out. And then you give it a format. So you're like, do I want it to be a, a, P, a Photoshop file, a PSD, or a PNG? Um, and for the Photoshop files, you can either go 16-bit or 32-bit. Uh, uh, finally, you're going to save it out to a location. So if you click this, it'll just bring up your file browser, and you're able to say where you want to write it out to. Um, and then when you're ready to roll, you just click Render. And then this dialog box pops up down here. You'll see the rendering take place here in the middle. I've done the baking show style, and that I've already done that. So you can see that this render on my machine took a minute and 23 seconds. Um, it's lovely and symmetric, so a little one, two, three there. Did not plan for that. Um, but once you have it rendered, what you can do is you can click here. As you're rendering it out as a Photoshop file, you can say edit in Photoshop. This will automatically open it up in Photoshop. And again, as you saw in the previous one, it will render the CG elements separate from the background. And it'll also give us these additional mats uh, it'll give us a depth mat that'll, in case we want to control depth of field stuff. And also this, again, like puzzle mat thing if we want to adjust certain components. So like, let's say I wanted the the actual, um, you know, like a couple parts of these, the headphones to be a little bit brighter. Um, I could just go in and say, select this, this, you know, like a couple of these areas. And go back into my layers, undo that, go into the original and say, actually, okay, now... I want to make that a little bit brighter. Like maybe that's just like a little bit different. All right, great. So uh, that is the workflow of taking your image from Stager, rendering it out, and then using all your Photoshop witchcraft to do your thing. So um, in the next video, I'm going to talk to you about if you don't want to export this as an image, we have some additional export methodologies that you can use.